Welcome. This video details my notes on setting up a CNC machine. So the day I've been waiting for has come. I bought myself one of those X-Carve CNC machines. Now unlike the other people on YouTube, I actually purchased mine and it took three weeks to get here. So keep that in mind. They say one to two weeks for processing plus they usually give you the ground shipping so it came to three weeks. But now it's here, and I'm really excited to open it up and see what's in there. I did not get the wasteboard kit, so that's why I only have two packages. These are the rails, and these are all the electronics, the router, and all that stuff. So the interesting thing about ordering the X-Carve, didn't come with instructions, just this one sheet. that basically thanks you for ordering it and tells you to go online and find easel at easel.com and find the instructions for putting it together online. And if you have any problems, call this number. Now, I, I'm probably more interested than the average customer, but I called X-Carve several times before I ordered this machine to answer questions about it. And I gotta say, it was one of the deciding points. They answered when I called, they had answers to my questions right when I asked. I, I really cannot complain about X-Carve's customer service so far, it has been wonderful. So I opened the hardware bag and one really cool thing that X-Carve did is every one of these bags with the hardware is labeled of what's in it and how much. I mean, M5 button head cap screws, here they are, all eight of them. And so that kind of, I think that's going to simplify the assembly by having them all in separate bags like that. That was cool. So X-Carve has really great video instructions of how to assemble all this. Unfortunately, my garage is just far enough away from the house that I don't get internet access out here. So I have to go in the house, watch the step, come out, and then try to assemble. There I've assembled the x-axis carriage. The videos were very helpful. Uh, the downside is I didn't order the tool kit, which I didn't think I'd need because, hey, I, I have the wrench and the Allen wrench. Um, the downside is this kind of Allen wrench is not ideal because you have to get inside of here for some of these heads. So. I kind of struggled with that. I might have to actually go buy an Allen wrench to make this work. So after not opening the tool kit, I have to go buy more tools. Oops. So now with that side put on, I put on the gantry. And they said be careful because it's easy. Uh, this stuff is kind of sharp on the edge, so it's easy to gouge your wheels. So I'm going to be very careful putting this on. I'm going to check to make sure all of my eccentric nuts are out so that this thing will go on easy. Oh yeah. Wow, that's smooth. Yeah, this thing though, it's basically going to take up the whole workbench. I actually don't know if this workbench is even big enough to assemble it. That's huge. What is that? 41 and a half inches and I haven't put the other side on it. You need like a full four foot by four foot square to set this thing. Very cool, but I'm gonna have to figure out where I'm gonna put it in here. Well, 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 this thing turned out to be so large that I had to get a piece of uh, well, actually particle board out to set it on so that I can keep building it. It went off the end of my workbench here and I really didn't want to risk damaging it. So I'm going to continue assembling it. Next step is to put in these cross members on each side. So the brace it. So one little improvement, I've seen so many times where tension mechanisms will slip even when they're tight over time, like they'll creep. So I added this number eight screw right here to hold that against there positively. And I'll do that at all the belting locations. On this side, I have a take-up screw, so I just tighten this and it'll tension the belt. And I want to get it to where it's like a guitar string. This is too loose. There you have it. Tight belt. Can't even get my finger under there. Okay, I've got all my wires cut to length. And I've got this first one wired up to this stepper motor. Now I need to feed this wire through the aluminum extrusion that makes up this axis to get to the other side and they've conveniently given you a hole to do just that. I bottomed out. And like I can see it on this side. So now with the needle nose pliers, you can just reach in and get it. Hey, look at that. 
and then I'll terminate this one on this side. Uh, the one, notice though, uh, two of the wires are actually reversed because in order for the gantry to move the same direction, these motors need to move opposite one another. So I'm going to do that right here where I reverse two of the leads to make them go opposite of each other, which in turn makes them the same. Kind of ironic though, isn't it, that opposite is the same? I like it. Okay, so I got everything wired up and I've just got the wires kind of hanging out here loose. Now I ordered the drag chain kit, so that's the next step is to put the drag chain on. Um, looks like they gave me two equivalent length pieces. So one of them is going to be for the X axis and one for the Y. Um, with the wiring kit, I did get a little bit of extra wire. That is, if I would have had like a DC spindle that's going here, I would wire this through the drag chain so that I could power it. Uh, I opted to go for the trim router option because it's a lot more powerful and that way I can cut heavier things. The downside is I'm looking at this drag chain and I'm looking at this plug. You can't thread that plug through that drag chain and even if I did, there's not enough cord to make it all the way. I think I'm going to have to come up with a cord that threads through the drag chain and ends up here, and then I'll have to shorten this cord and put the plug up closer. As I don't know why X-Carve didn't have a better solution for this. I'm very disappointed. Like, uh, I mean, so far, this kit has gone together like butter. It's been a joy to put together. Uh, but I'm going to have to think of a solution for this. I've thought of a solution to my plugging in the router problem. I really want this to go through the drag chain, so I found this old 20 foot extension cord in the bottom of my toolbox and I'm going to cut the male end off of it so that I can feed it through from this point and I can leave the female end right here to act as a plug. Then I'll coil up the wire on the router, plug it in and I'll tie everything off so that nothing catches or anything. So, no going back now. And here I'll give you a close-up. So there's my extension cord going into the drag chain, following it all the way over to this side. Then those wires just continue on and they meet up with this little wire down here. And then out the other side is where everything's going to hook up to the power supply and the power strip and the computer and all that fun stuff. Now when I bought my x car, I saved money on the waste board and I decided I was just going to make my own. Now, even if you buy the x card without the waste board, they still give you the bars that go in here that the board screws down to, and that helps hold everything flat. These bars are connected by angle brackets and then T-nuts that slide into the track, and you can tighten down a screw. Uh, one thing to note, though, if you don't buy the baseboard, you get all the T-nuts and brackets you need to make this assembly, but they do not give you any extra T-nuts to actually screw your board down to these pieces. So it looks like I'm going to have to order some extra T-nuts for that purpose. And here it is, my version of the waste board. And I did just like they did, where I have it actually bolted down, both on the edges and in the center. That way any flexing can be taken out by that aluminum extrusion that's under there. And I got ten places all the way around where it's bolted. And it seemed to come out pretty good, it was a little finicky. But it's actually just a square piece, 39 and a quarter by 39 and a quarter inches. And then I just had to drill holes to bolt it down. Pretty cool. So building my own waste board turned out to be a little more difficult than I thought. And I don't really care to cut into it immediately. So I put down this quarter inch thick hardboard on top of the MDF so that this I can easily replace and then the MDF I can leave. Uh, and I could not run this all the way to the edge because if you see here these wheels for the carriage, they go really close to the waste board, the half inch thick, so you cannot actually fit another sheet of quarter inch under that. So I decided to go ahead and put threaded inserts in my waste board anyway, except I'm using American screw sizes, uh, quarter 20, which is very common in any, any hardware store. And I'm drilling the holes on a three inch grid pattern. I've been careful to lay them out so that none of the holes will hit the support members underneath, the aluminum pieces. And these just go right through. It's just a lot of holes. So I'm 
about these prong style threaded inserts? They have sharp teeth on them. Normally you put them on the back side of the hole and you hammer them in and then you're good to go. But the machine's kind of hard to flip over and hammer them in. So I've taken a screw, I've oiled it, and now I can just put the screw through, start my nut, and I should be able to pull it in with the impact. And there you have it. And there's the threaded insert on the top, and there it is on the bottom. It worked. So now that I put threaded inserts in my table, I'm actually interested in using this clamp kit that they sent. Uh, they gave it to me by mistake, but when I called them, they said I could just keep it. So now we're shipping it back to them. Um, so trouble is, it was designed for metric hardware, which is slightly smaller than the quarter twenty that I'm using on my wasteboard. So my screws don't fit in the slot. So I've taken a nine thirty second drill bit. That's a thirty second over a quarter inch, and I'm going to wallow up the slot with it so that I can use these clamps. And voila, it works with my quarter inch screws. Pretty awesome. The coolest part about this clamp kit is that if I should I mill into this or break it, uh, at Venables has the DXF available online so I can use x -Carve to make myself another one. Isn't that awesome? Okay, so I finished the electronics. It really wasn't too bad following their directions. I've got the leads from the stepper motors coming in here. Uh, this is a power supply, just basic computer power supply, and on top of it, uh, these is the actual circuit board for running the stepper motors. The USB cable here goes in right on the side, and the power cable goes in right on the back. And I can select between 110 and 220 volts, so it could work in either, you know, either North America or in Europe. Now I'm going to mount my router, which is actually going to do the cutting. Get it out of this base that I'm never going to use. I'll run this collar all the way off of it, and barely, barely goes in there. Contain all this wire, just going to put a cable tie around it here, and plug it into the extension cord I put through the drag chain. That should work good. Okay, well now I'm doing final calibration. I'm taking a square, and I'm making sure that my z-axis is square with the table. So I've got it square right there, and I'm going to tighten it back up. Okay, I've got everything tightened down now. The router is tightened down in its mount, and the eccentric nuts are actually clamping the roller bearings onto the track. And so now it's it's fairly rigid. This is the center point where it should be the least rigid. And it's not bad. I knew that it was going to flex a little bit based on reviews I'd read before I purchased it, but I think it's going to be okay. And we'll, we'll you know, the story, the proof is in the pudding, so we'll see how it cuts. Uh, one other note I was reading about CNC machines is once it's connected to the power supply as it is now, these motors, when you rotate them, they do generate a little bit of back current that can feed back into the circuit boards. So now that it's connected, I have to be careful about moving it very slowly you know, every time I move it. That way it won't develop such high currents that it burns anything out in there. So I've been running back and forth between the house to look at my instructions, and now is the moment of truth. Everything's wired up. I've got it connected to my computer. This is my old college computer, which I'm hoping to use in the shop to run the machine. It appeared as though that internet access is required to run XCarve. The final step, I have to go to Easel, and I let Easel talk to the machine and set itself up. I'm unable to do that without internet access out here, so I need to think of a way to get my router closer or somehow get internet access out to my garage in order to run this machine. Didn't expect that. Alright, you see this thing folks up in here, these green blinking lights? That is the solution to my internet problem. It is called a Wi-Fi range extender. I did a little research, they're only about 30 bucks. And now I can even watch YouTube videos right here in the garage. My internet problems are solved. Hooray! Let's see, I can move the X, I can move the Z. The router goes up and down. Uh, but the, F, the Y axis, I'm having a little trouble with. It's like one side is outpacing the other. Okay, 
I finally got the x-axis moving good too. I was skipping steps like crazy, like the stepper motors were trying to move and it wasn't moving. And then I figured out that I, the eccentric wheels that you tighten on the maker slide, I had them too tight, so there was too much friction and it was not moving smoothly. So I loosened them and now it seems to be working much, much better. So I want to run my first test cuts, but I haven't actually taken the time to make a box and put a filter and a fan on this so that I don't get dust inside of my electronics. So instead, I went to the hardware store and got one of those shop vac filters that you just put over the filter, a little like filter bonnet. This is a quick and dirty way to keep a lot of dust out of there, and I can just run the X card for tests without worrying about interfering with or without hurting the electronics. Okay, first test cut ever. Let's try it. Wait, stop, stop! Oh, looks like the router cut into my clamp on the first cut ever. So what happened here is that the, the machine started skipping steps. Like, it got hung up on something and then the motors did not have enough power to move it. Uh, I can see right under here where it got off track. It was doing pretty well until it got to about there. Uh, something about it made it skip some steps, so I gotta figure that out. I've been reading a little bit online. It seems that most people have had to increase the power to the stepper motors. And there's three little adjustment screws to do that. So I'm just gonna turn them up a little bit by turning these clockwise. So turning up the power to the motors like I did, it does generate a lot more heat and uh, it could shorten the life of the motors and possibly the electronics, but at this point I can't carve anything because it's so wimpy, so gotta give it a shot. I can tell there's a lot more current going to these motors because they make a higher pitch sound when they move instead of a it's more of a So I think this is going to work. So here's the first cut, and it even put notches in so that it doesn't jiggle loose. All I have to do is take a chisel and break it out of there. I did notice that just this little pattern caused a little bit of charring on the end of my router bit. So I'll just break these little notches to get it out. There it is, a little star, D plus K. I hope you enjoyed this video of XCarve Setup Notes. In a future video, I will do a full review and give my conclusions on this machine.